Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm streaming from down in my basement tonight, so I don't know how this signal's going to be. Uh, somebody put up in the comments if you can hear me and see me okay. Make sure it ain't lagging or anything. Let's see who we got. Want to be outdoors? What's up, buddy? And we got Cody from Three Plus One Outdoors. What's up, Cody? <laughs> Somebody will just put in there that it's not lagging or let me know if it is. Looks and sound good. All right, appreciate it, Cody. We'll get started here in just a second. Maybe a couple more people jump in. Uh, Cody, I don't think I'm going to be able to fish Sunday. I got some stuff around here I'm going to have to take care of. I'm going to try to get out there for just a little bit tomorrow. But I messaged your dad today and I found some good fish. And he will, I'm sure he'll tell you where I found them at. So I'll let him know. Creo, what's up, buddy? Thanks for hopping in here. We got Philip Williams. What's up, Philip? Uh, I guess getting started here, I'm going to tie up a couple little simple jigs right quick. These are some, uh, I actually caught some crappie on these today. Where's the camera? There it is. Just a little bitty chartreuse jig like that. They were hitting it pretty good today. So we'll start out just the basics. I'll show you how I time and we'll get into it. Let's see. We'll start out with a jig head here. It's my jig head right there. As you can see, it's got the little groove on it. I can't find that camera for nothing. That little thing right there. So we are, that is for holding tubes and soft plastics in place. And we're not going to need that. So we're going to just crunch that little dude right off. Make everything nice and round. We don't want an odd shape looking little minor deal there. So you can see I got it all off. The paint come off with it, but that's fine. We'll stick it in our vise here. Oh, lost. There he goes. Center down good and tight. All right. Start out with some thread. I used to, it's kind of a chartreuse colored thread there. I'll put it on my little threader here. Just clips on there. Put my glasses on. I'm getting old and can't see. Philip says tying is relaxing also. It sure is, especially when the weather's like it is here in Kentucky. About 15 degrees and snowing. It's fun to stay in and do something like this. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this line almost all the way up like that. I'll make me a couple real loose wraps just to get it to hold. Then I'll come back. And I'm going to tie this real good. I'm going to make a solid foundation right there. And I'm going to go all the way back on the wire hook right there just a little bit. And I'm going to come back. This is going to help everything stick. Make my wraps real tight there. Come all the way back up to the head of the jig. Pull me out some slack there. Oops, drop my scissors. All right, this is my tag piece right here. I'll go ahead and just clip that off right there and we will get I like to use this this is the marabou the chartreuse color it's a little bit softer than some of the other stuff and in the winter time they seem to like it softer stuff better for some reason so we'll get us some out here pull us a piece off Pull us a piece off about that big right there. And all this part right here is kind of hard. So we'll just snip that off. What I'm going to do is just lay it 
on the top of my jig head right there about where it will go and i will take my thread and just like before i make two really loose wraps just to kind of hold it then i'll come back up to the jig head and start wrapping real tight real close together real important to make these wraps tight because this is what's going to hold it and i'll come off the jig head onto the wire just a little bit that just ensures it's going it ain't going to go nowhere this particular jig right here, I caught skipjack on two or three weeks ago. And I caught around 25 skipjack on this jig. And it looked like it did when I first tied it on. I mean, it didn't come apart. It done great. Let's see. Find me a piece of... This is uh, some, some Chanel I got already open. It's real thin. You see it's got some flash in it. I'm going to cut off a piece probably, we'll say about eight inches. All right. And I'll take the end of this piece right here. I'm going to lay it right on top of the jig head right there. I'll take my thread again. Make, it, make four or five little wraps right there just to hold it in place. All right. Pull my feathers back. And I'm going to start wrapping this right here some slack here start on the wire back there Whoop! come on done Put a little bit more wrap on it there it won't come off this time all right let's do it again we'll take this part the chanel we're gonna pull it really tight right here these wraps need to be real, real tight. And when we come back around, we're going to almost overlap it just a little bit. Just so you're covering up all the thread and stuff underneath it. Plus, it gives it just a little bit bigger profile. We'll wrap this all the way up to the back of the jig head. All right, when I get to the back of the jig head, I'm going to hold this piece of Chanel right here, and I'll take my line thread right here. I'm going to wrap two wraps like this. Then I'm going to pull my Chanel forward so we can come behind it. Make two wraps like that. Pull it back again. We'll do two more right behind the jig head. And that's going to hold that Chanel nice and tight. It's not going to move. So everything's in place now. I'm going to leave me six or seven inches of thread right here. Cut it off. And this is where uh, a lot of your advanced tires will use this. Your thread finisher right here. I hadn't mastered that thing yet, so I do half knots. They seem to work good, so just make sure you go right behind that jig head right there. Right behind it. Cinch it down tight. Pull it tight. You'll see that jig. All the pressure I got on it, that's how tight we want it. I'm going to do it about three times. There's two. And we'll do one more. Uh, Creo, uh, he says, what's your opinion on sickle hooks versus standard hooks for slickers? Well, uh, these skipjack uh, jigs that I'm making, I actually... Me and Hagen Grubbs actually sat down and talked about he, he was wanting a specific type of jig, and uh, but he wanted a sickle cell hook on it. And he said he thinks the, sickles, uh, the sickle hooks, uh, they stay hooked up with a fish better than the regular hooks. And uh, 
I've never paid that much attention, but when I went a couple of weeks ago and tried it out, I didn't lose near as many fish either. So keeping them hooked up seems to work pretty good. All right, we got that. We're tied up right there. I'm gonna take my little glue here. I'm just gonna put a couple little drops right behind the jig head right there. Right. If you have a hair dryer, you can speed up the process. Take my little finishing scissors here. We'll pull that thread so we can cut it tight. Grab the Chanel and do the same thing. And if you have any little stragglers, you can just kind of pinch them off. Take it out of the vise there. Pull that hair back. We want to cut this a little bit behind the hook there. About, about so right there. You'll have a few little stragglers on there. You can just kind of touch them up. There you go. Looks a little bigger on camera than it is in my hand. It's a tiny little G. Once that marabou hair gets wet right there, it uh, has more of a minnow shape. There's one. Let's tie another. But yes, Creole, I do think that those... Uh, do work better. Cody says 132nd ounce. That is a 116th ounce right there. I have some 132nd ounce hooks, and I don't know if I'll be able to tie one for you guys. The way I have to hold the camera and try to tie in front of the camera and stuff, it's a little bit hard. I'll try one right quick. This is a 132nd ounce. Everything's just so close together on these jigs. And I use these 130 seconds a lot. I may use some tomorrow when these cold fronts come in. Sometimes they hit these smaller baits a lot better. Put that in the vise. Let's see. Let's go with some white marabou this time. I did get get out a little bit on the lake today in the kayak, and after about an hour and a half, those 15 mile an hour winds, they had waves starting to come over in the kayak. And I have a trolling motor on my kayak, but my trolling motor was having trouble getting back. It was so rough out there today, so our trip got cut a little bit short, but we're gonna go try again tomorrow. Got a piece of white. It's got a big stem on this piece right here, so we'll come way back here Cut that stem. Set this down for just a second. Let me change my thread. We'll go with the white thread on this one. Is anybody else fishing tomorrow? Get this threaded up real quick. There it goes. All right. 351 Cleveland. What's up, buddy? Thanks for joining in. All right. For those of y'all that just got in here, we're going to try this little bitty 132nd ounce jig. They're a little bit harder to tie, but we'll go with white thread on this one. Hold it up. Make my loose wraps. And start tying our way back. Get out on the wire back there. 
work our way up back to the back of the jig head right there. Bring it all in. Right. Cody said, me and Randall going to go out. Daddy sick, so he can't. Well, I hope he gets the feeling better, and good luck to you and Randall. Uh, if your dad didn't tell you where I found those fish at today, message me and like Cody. Found some good ones. I had uh, all my crappie rods on the kayak. I didn't have a catfish rod one with me. All right, we'll go back to our marabou hair here. Place it on top. Get a couple loose wraps to get it started. Again, make sure these wraps are real tight. It's the most important part of keeping it together right here. And when you go off the end of that little jig head back there on the wire, I think that just seems to make it hold just a little bit better and tighter. So no way these jigs are going to come apart. We'll go with a, we'll do another chartreuse Chanel. I'm in peace here. Let's open a new pack. Again, this is the Cabela's chartreuse. It's got the sparkle in it. Cut us a piece off about seven inches, something like that. All right, we'll lay that right on top, dead center, right there. Take our thread. We will wrap this all the way back again. And I like to wrap mine kind of at an angle. Don't bring it through just straight over. I think that holds everything in place just a little bit better. Got a little bit of marabou hair up here. Going to snip that just to clean it up a little bit. Before we get the Chanel on there. All right. Pull the hair back. Take your Chanel. Make some tight wraps, overlapping just a little bit there. Thumb come off of it. Got to do it again there. I was looking up the camera, see what Cody was saying. I said, yeah, we talked about it today. I think I'm going to start on lower end of the lake. If bike slow, then head up that way. Probably freeze driving across the lake. It's going to be cold. Definitely going to be cold. Get this wrapped again here. And thank you, Cody, for sharing this stream out. I, I sure appreciate it. We're gonna see if we can get back up to a thousand again. It took me just a little over a year last year. I'm not gonna be in no hurry. We'll make three wraps behind the jig head. Pull the Chanel up. Make another wrap. One more. Pull it back. 
pull some slack out. We'll do our little half knots. Now, I'm not saying the way I do this is the correct way by any means. This is just the way that I felt comfortable doing doing them, and they they work good for me. And so, as long as the jigs hold up and they look pretty good, then I'm all right with it. Make sure it's cinched down good and tight there. Apply just a drop or two of glue there. I'll take the end, just kind of spread it around a little bit. That holds that thread, locks everything in place. It'll come up real tight with our finishing scissors. Cut that off. Pull the Chanel tight. trim it too. Trim a few scrubbers there. And you see it got one little piece I need to trim up right there, but white chartreuse. Let's go with something uh more shad like this time. Uh, who did I see come in here? Big Jake's catfishing. Hey, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Let's get a, we'll go 1 16th ounce. Catch a lot of crappie on this little color I'm about to tie here. Let's go sickle hook. Cut these little jokers off. All right. We've got the little tabs there knocked off. We'll put it in the vise. Thread ready here. All right. I'll pull my thread up almost to the end of it. Same thing again. Make our loose wraps to get it started. Then we'll come back a lot tighter. You don't have to overlap these, just get them pretty close because you're going to go across this but three more times. Back on the wire, about seven or eight times, then I'll start working my way back forward. Sometimes it's a little tough to go from that wire back on the back of this jig head right here. It's kind of hard to get the thread to stay sometimes. So I'll just stick my thumb up against it and that seems to help. We'll start our wraps going all the way back up, all the way to the back of the jig head. All right. snip our tag in there all right we'll go with another piece of this white marabou here same deal we'll cut the stem off right there we'll get it in our hand try to make everything good and uniform before we lay it out on that jig Of 
lay it right on top. Start with your loose wraps. Come back right behind the jig head and start your regular wraps. Really, really tight. I'm probably repeating myself, but I have to go over these steps in my head so I don't remember it. So I will remember it. All right, back up the back of the jig head there, and we're going to do different color Chanel here. I have any open? Yeah, I got a little bit open here. And this is kind of the same stuff, just a different color. This is the Sparkle Braid Pearl. I get this at Cabela's also. It's real thin. And I also have a different type. This is the same thing in a medium, but you can see how much thicker it is. If I want a bigger profile jig or something, I'll tie these on. Just makes it a little bit bigger. But the winter time, I'm going to go with the smaller stuff. But I'll definitely be using this probably in the summertime just for bigger profile or closer to spring. Let's get us a piece off. Seven or eight inches be plenty. Fills the water. We got Chad in here. Who let him out of jail? Start with the wraps. We'll wrap this one pretty tight all the way back to get it to hold. You're just wrapping that piece of Chanel on the back of the hook right there. See how tight that is? All right, we'll start our wraps with the Chanel. On the back of the hook back there. Slightly overlapping, very tight. Pull them really tight. What I like about this uh, particular color Chanel, it's got the sparkle in it, but it's also got a little bit of red glitter in it too. It kind of gives off a wounded bait fish kind of color maybe. And then crappie do pick up on that kind of stuff. Off there. All right, and I'm holding my end of my Chanel tight while I finish tying this. We'll go two in the front, pull the Chanel forward. Oop, got it mixed up. Go two behind it. I'll pull the Chanel back again. Just pull me a little bit of slack. So everything's good and secure right there. Nothing's going to come undone yet. We can go ahead and take our glue here. Just right behind that jig head, just a dot. And I'll use the tip of it just to spread it around so no glue sticking up. It all sinks down into that thread right there. Just helps secure it a little bit better too. Let that dry just a second. Who else we got in here? Big Bill's veteran catfishing. Welcome, buddy. Said hi to Chad. Uh, all right. We'll go ahead and clip our Chanel here. Pull it real tight. I'm doing this backwards for the camera, so it's all these positions are a little bit backwards to me. It's gonna be a good looking jig here. We'll pull that fur down, 
kind of tight. Make sure, see how nothing's coming out of there. Hold it by that hook here. We will snip the end of this tail off. If you get a few little stragglers there, just kind of make it a little pretty. Nice and uniform. Right. Get one more little piece new clip there. There you go. Trying to see if you can see it in this light. Show the light out here a little more. You can see it a little bit better. I don't know if you can see the iridescent through the camera or not, if it shows up much. Yeah, that's a 1 16th ounce. That's the sickle cell or sick. Why well, I keep saying sickle cell? Sickle hook. And, uh, I use it both for the crappie and the skipjack. Uh, right now, I'm out of skipjack jig, so I'll be tying some more of these up this weekend. Uh, where I fished today, the water was pretty muddy, so I'm probably going to go with some uh, chartreuse and some, some pinks this weekend. Works a lot better in that dirty water. But today, I did catch them on these. That's the chartreuse with the green fleck in them. And if you've seen the other video I put out earlier in the week, I showed you the jig that I catch most of my crappie on, or I've caught more than anything on. And uh, I will be using that. So if you want to watch that video and see what jig I catch most of my fish on in the wintertime, it's not one that I hand tie. It's a, it's a store-bought one. Uh, Cody said, what was the water temp today? Where I was at, I had 38.7. We got Freddy's Outdoor Adventures in the house. What's up, Freddy? Make sure I ain't missed anybody. 17 people in here. That's awesome. I didn't know if anybody would come on to watch me tie these jigs. We'll do it again. Let's come up with something a little different here. Let's go with a pink head. I caught fish on this today too. This is the sickle hook. See, this is a one eighth ounce. All right, we got all that cleaned up right there. Stick her down in the vise. Just a little bit more. All right. We're going to go back with the chartreuse thread, thread this time. Creole said I'm about to put him to sleep. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It is very relaxing, Creole. I enjoy doing it. It's a fun little hobby. And it saves you a lot of money. This little kit I got, I got at Cabela's for like 30 bucks. Wasn't one of the more expensive kits, but this is all you need right here. Get it threaded in there. This hole on this little threader is tiny. About got it worked up in there. Let's cut it off. Let's try it again. That piece of thread had a bad spot in it, it looked like. 
one won't go in there good. start with our main piece here couple thread it nice and tight all the way back give us a good foundation to tie to go back on the wire seven or eight times work our way back up forward Chad said he found out last night. The one of them was the boss. Yeah, the ladies put on a good show last night. That I watched it while I was driving. It was pretty entertaining. Let's see. Let's go with something different this time. Let's go with some uh, some pink in it. Cut me a piece off here. Get it in my hand there, kind of get it like I want to, cut the ends off straight to where it's going to sit on the back of the jig head, not come over the jig head. Kind of pull the loose ones out there a little bit. And we'll lay it up there. A couple loose wraps. That's on there. Come back to the front. Start with our wraps real tight. Working our way back. Don't get in no hurry doing this. I can do it a lot faster when I ain't on camera. But this position, I'm trying to show the jig and stuff in a little awkward. So it's like I'm trying to do everything left-handed. All right. Let's go with some green Chanel. This will be a killer crappie jig right here. Take the end of it, lay it right on top in the center of that jig head. Take your thread. Really tight wraps. Work our way back up. And when you have contrasting colors like this, see this uh, pink and this green clash pretty good. So if you have any of these little pink strands, you want to go ahead and clip them now just in case the wrap doesn't get real. I'll pull that hair back. We'll start with our Chanel. Pull it tight. Make sure you see this thing bending. If it's not bending, you're not pulling it tight enough. I just kind of keep my finger on the back to hold that wrap tight when I'm getting it started. And we'll go with some real tight wraps, slightly overlap.
even in the winter time if the water's clear or dirty either one i catch more fish on these oddball colors like this just the bright colors all right we got that pulled tight take our thread Come back on the other side of it, make a couple wraps. And we'll pull it back and we're gonna make a couple more wraps there. Pull me some slack there. We got Miss D in the house. We'll do our half knot. Right behind the jig head there and get it. Cinch it down good and tight. We're gonna do two more of these half knots. Just to make sure everything is good and tight. Don't want nothing coming apart or moving. All right, grab our Chanel. And our thread. We'll take our glue, one drop behind the jig head. Kind of spread it, rub it down in those threads right there. And you'll never be able to see that glue right there. And that glue just goes down in those threads right there. Give it just a second to dry. We got Mark from Catfish and Crappie in the house. What's up, Mark? Thank you for joining us tonight. Probably getting close to dry there. We'll take it out of the vise. Come back behind us here. Trim this tail. And there it is. A good wintertime crappie jig right there. I'll probably try this one tomorrow, as a matter of fact. But that's the one eighth. We tied some one thirty seconds, some one sixteenth, and some one eighths. These one eighths that are no doubt a lot easier to tie because you got more room to work with. That's a neat little jig right there. Well, guys, that's all I'm gonna tie tonight. I got to get my rods and stuff ready for tomorrow. Uh, it's supposed to be like 15 degrees in the morning, so it's going to be a chilly one out in that kayak. So maybe we can put some fish in the boat, try to get a video made tomorrow. And uh, I appreciate you guys jumping in here tonight. I've had fun tying these jigs. Uh, hopefully you learned something or leave us a comment for something you'd like to see us do different. Just appreciate you coming in and we make sure said hello to everybody before we get out of here we got chris hill what's up chris will you be at catfish conference to purchase items are you talking to me chris uh i will probably run up there one day uh message me if you want some and i'll make sure to bring some up I, I'm usually up there both days because it's pretty close to my house, but uh, I'm probably only going to go one day this year. Want to be outdoors, said so a little chilly. No, no shorts, no flip-flops tomorrow, but I'm ready for short and flip-flop weather. I'm tired of this cold weather. Well, guys, we're going to end this. Thank you again for coming in tonight, and uh, appreciate you guys.